You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's Jason Shepard. Cooper Rawls out for the top of the seventh for Louisiana. His team now leading 9-7. Two runs scoring in the bottom of the sixth. Off the bat of Julian Brock, a two-run double. Yesterday, he scored one of Louisiana's two runs on a solo home run to center field. And he puts his team back on top here as we begin the top of the seventh here at Russo Park. Speaking of home runs, Safeya Malwai will lead off. He takes ball one. Safeya hitting a two-run home run in the third inning, his first home run as BYU Cougar. 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss, 1-1 one one the count to the Cougar designated hitter from Hawaii, Safeya Maui. BYU still out hitting the Cajuns, 7-6, but it's 9-7 Louisiana. That pitch foul back, 1-2 and two now to Safeya. Tate Gamble on deck for BYU. The 1 2 pitch. Safeya pops it up. Off to the left. It will get out of play. And into the stands. One ball, two strikes. Mal Wai leading off the top of the seventh. BYU needs two to tie here. One-two pitch, and Safeya pulls the ball, an absolute no-doubter over the right field wall. He already had a two-run shot. How about a solo shot? That's three RBI and two home runs for Safeya Mauwai. 9-8, Louisiana with the lead, but the Cougars are coming back. How about that? I looked at the right fielder, Hood. He turned and then just stopped. He knew that ball was crushed. 9-8, Louisiana. The Cougars on the comeback trail. Still nobody out. And the batter is Tate Gamble, looks at ball one. The 1-0 pitch. Misses, and Gamble holds up, and it's 2-0. The 2-0 pitch, called strike one, and Tate thought that was off the plate. He looks back to the home plate umpire, Ryan Broussard, and asked where that pitch was. 2-1 pitch from Rawls. A ground ball up the middle, but right to the shortstop, playing it perfectly. The ball actually, it looks like it hit off of the second base bag. And DeBarge had moved over and playing right behind it. He's able to throw out Gamble. So, one out. Bring in the first baseman, Jacob Wilk. Wilk already with a double and an RBI. First pitch to Jake, takes ball one. Breaking ball from Cooper Rawls. A one pitch. Wilk checked his swing and took ball one. BYU with a run here in the top of the seventh. A solo home run from Safeya Mauai, his second home run of the game. 1-1 one, one pitch. In for strike two. The 1-2 one, pitch to Wilk, and it's a strikeout of Jacob Wilk and two away. Bryant Ball. Will get his first plate appearance. He'll bat ninth in the order. If he can get on, back to the top of the order, and Ozzie Pratt. 
After the Cajuns got two in the bottom of the sixth, the Cougars have come back with one in the top of the seventh. Bryant Ball, a ground ball to DeBarge short, over to first. And that will retire the Cougars in the top of the seventh. But Safaya Mauwai, his second home run of the game. This a solo shot into right field. He has three RBIs, and the Cougars cut into the lead. It's now 9-8 Louisiana as we reach the seventh inning stretch. Brought to you by Mountain America, official credit union of BYU Athletics. Back with the bottom of the seventh from Lafayette, Louisiana, on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Bottom of the seventh, Louisiana leading BYU 9-8. Jake Porter back out for another inning of work. And the first pitch is a ball. As he pitches to Will Vayon. And Vayon pulls the ball down the line in left field. And that is a solo home run. Vayon matches the solo home run from Safaya Mauai in the top of the seventh with one of his own, this time to left field, in the bottom of the seventh. 10-8, Louisiana. Eight, Louisiana back up by two runs. Yesterday's final score was two to one. Right now, 18 runs have scored in this game, and there's still two and a half innings left. The 0-1 pitch is a bunt by Marshock down the first base line, and Cooper Vest, who has come in as a Defensive substitution at first, able to tag out Marshock running to first. So Vest in for Wilk, and one out, base is empty. But a solo home run moments ago from Will Vayon has given the Cajuns their two-run advantage again at 10-8. Porter, his first pitch fouled off by Willis. No other changes defensively for BYU. So Cooper Vest will now bat in the eighth spot for BYU. Count now one and one to C.J. Willis. One-one pitch. Bounces in front of home plate. Two and one the count. Porter with the 2-1, swing and a miss, 2-2. Two and two. Good pitch by Jake Porter. Two balls, two strikes. Base is empty, one out. 2-2 two, two pitch, fouled off and out of play. The count stays 2-2. Two and two. BYU still with one more hit than Louisiana, but it's the runs that count, and the Cajuns have more. It's 10 to 8, bottom of the seventh. 2 2 pitch, and Willis lines it into foul territory into the bullpen of the Cajuns. Two balls and two strikes. Two-two pitch, misses, and it's a full count. Kyle DeBarge on deck for the Ragin' Cajuns. The payoff pitch from Porter, and Willis hits that ball into right center. It's near the wall, and it hits off of the top of the wall and back in. He's going for three. The throw to third is in time! The throw was made a perfect throw from Tate Gamble in right field. 
and Willis got greedy, turning a double into a triple. He's asking for them to look at a replay. The call on the field is out. We will see if it stands. That throw could not have been more perfect, and it wasn't cut off. It was from the wall to third. No bounce. Unfortunately, they have changed the channel that the game was on, and I do not have access to changing the channel. They've now put it on Louisiana softball, so I do not have the opportunity to look at the replays. So we will all find out together when they make the call. As soon as, now granted, players are going to do this regardless on any close play, but as soon as the, the out was called, Willis jumped up and put his, you know, the two hands on, on his ears, like get the, head, get the headset on, go check it out. In the meantime, BYU does have activity in the bullpen. Still waiting to find out. Still taking a look at it. What a throw by Gamble. Still waiting to find out. They're taking a long look at it. Everybody's standing around. Willis isn't moving from third. He's still there. Have not seen the umpires pop out. The replay is right next to the Cajun dugout. So once they go down there, I can't see them. And everybody just kind of standing around waiting for the call. If it stands as called, it will be two outs with the bases empty. For somebody that is has been able to see a replay, being told by my guy Duff that it looks like he's out. We will see if the umpires come out. We get the out call. We will, uh, we're still all waiting here. The score is now 10-8. BYU pulled within a run on the solo home run from Safaya Malwai, but it was Will Vayon led off the bottom of the seventh with a solo home run of his own, and the call will stand. Willis is out, and an unbelievable throw from Gamble at the wall to third base to get Willis out. If he had stopped at second, he would have been just fine but he tried to turn a double into a triple, and it cost him an out. So, two away, base is empty. That'll bring in number 44, or excuse me, number 24, Kyle DeBarge. Back in the top of the order, he's hitting with two outs, and the base is empty facing Jake Porter. And that pitch inside, and they're going to say it hit him. Kyle DeBarge, Kyle DeBarge was arguing he didn't even know he got hit. The home plate umpire had already given him the base, and he had, was turning around talking to his third base coach, and the third base coach says, get down to first, that hit you. Can you be hit and not know it? I guess you can Either way, he's down at second with two outs. The batter now is Heath Hood, the right fielder. And DeBarge on the move down to second. The throw perfect on the money by Bryant Ball. The tag placed by Jones. And that time, the Cougars caught him stealing for out number three. The Cajuns regain their two-run advantage. However, it's 10-8 heading to the eighth inning on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's Jason Shepard. Top of the eighth, 10-8 Louisiana. New pitcher for the Raging Cajuns, J.T. Etheridge. His second appearance against BYU in this series. 
It's his third appearance overall. He's pitched two. He's given up one hit, walked one, and struck out one. And the first pitch is called strike one to the leadoff man, Ozzie Pratt. BYU needs two. A one pitch misses one and one. Ozzie 0 for 4 today. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike 2. Luke Anderson on deck for BYU. Etheridge with the 1-2. Pratt popped it up into foul territory in front of the dugout of the Cajuns. And the catch is made by Marshock. He overran it. Fell back, hoping that it would find his glove, and he did. He was right on the top step of his team's dugout, and then he realized he overran it and then just reached back and made the catch in time, one away. Wow, an athletic play from Marshock. And Anderson looks at ball one from Etheridge. One zero pitch, foul back to the screen. One and one, the count to Anderson. One one pitch, another fly ball, just on the grass at second base. The catch is made by Willis for out number two. So two up, two down here in the top of the eight. Austin Deming at the plate. Cougars down two runs, running out of time here in Lafayette. And the first pitch from Etheridge hits Austin Deming, so he'll take first base, and that'll bring the tying run to the plate in Cole Gamble. Cole with a sack bunt and a walk in the ball game today. And the first pitch to Cole fouled out of play for strike one. Cole moved down a spot in the batting order today from third to fourth. Basically, he and Deming switched spots. Austin moved up to third. Now Cole batting cleanup. Etheridge with the 0-1 pitch. Misses away, one and one the count to Cole Gamble. The one one pitch inside, two and one. Dimming, a two out hit by pitch moments ago. He's at first. And at the plate is Cole Gamble. Two one. Chopped foul, and it's two and two. Hood, Rockefort, and Brock do up in the bottom of the eighth when we get there. 2-2 two -two pitch. Outside part of the plate. Gamble's rung up, and he doesn't like it. Thought it was off the plate. Home plate umpire doesn't want to hear it. That will strand the runner at first. BYU trails 10-8. Bottom of the eighth next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Austin Mabius out to pitch the bottom of the eighth for the BYU Cougars. Boston making his second appearance of the season. He's pitched an inning, no hits, and he has two strikeouts. He's finishing up his warm-up tosses, which gives me time to let you know the Big O Tires presents on the rubber as we look at both teams' pitching numbers. We'll start with BYU. Cutter Clausen pitched an inning in two-thirds, gave up a hit, four runs, all four earned, four walks. Carter Smith, an inning in the third, three hits, three runs, all three earned, a walk. Sam Beck, two innings, one hit, no runs, one walk, three strikeouts. Jake Porter, two innings, three hits, three runs, all three earned, and a walk. 
And now Boston Mabius out on the bump for his first throws and first pitches. And he will face Heath Hood. First pitch is a strike to Hood for the home team. Nazu, Christie, Rawls, and Etheridge have combined for eight innings, eight hits, eight runs, all eight earned, six walks, and seven strikeouts. Big O Tires, the team you trust. The 0 1 pitch to Hood. Swing and a miss, strike two. And maybe it's coming in throwing some heaters. We've had two Zions Bank home runs from Safaya Mauai today. 0 2 pitch. Slow roller to third. Deming gloves, throws, and the ball is. A little high, and it skips off the glove of Cooper Vest at first. And Hood now at second base. Safaya Malwai with a two-run home run in the third, and then a solo home run in the seventh inning. Those home runs brought to you by Zions Bank. For banking that helps you game plan for life, Zions Bank is for you. So runner at second and nobody out. And it's a strike to Carson Rockefort. They're going to say a single for Heath Hood and then advancing to second on the throwing error by Austin Deming. It's 10-8 Louisiana. And now timeout called. Ball and Mabius had a conversation. That ended, and as soon as that was done, Rockefort asked to go talk with the third base coach. Now that conversation is over. Talk with the head coach of the Cougars, Trent Pratt, during our post-game segments. Get your final stats once this is final. BYU still an opportunity at the top of the ninth, but right now trying to keep it a two-run deficit. 0-1 pitch to Rockefort. Fouls it, and he falls behind 0-2. Julian Brock due up next. And it was his double that scored two that broke the 7-7 tie. Since then, each team has scored a run, and it's now 10-8. Mabius is pitch outside and in the dirt. Nice block by Bryant Ball. Hood stays put at second base. Heading home tonight. Back to the 801 after being here in Louisiana for the past 10 days. An eight game, 10 day trip. One two pitch. Ground ball to first. Vest will take it himself. Hood advances to third and one out. Julian Brock. He's been a tough out for Cougar pitching this series. And now he'll come in with one out and a runner at third. As the Cajuns look to add to their two-run lead and give themselves more cushion before we head to the ninth inning. Maybe it's his first pitch, high and outside, ball one. The 1 0. Line sharply into right center, and it will fall down. It will be a ground rule double. That will score Hood from third, and it's 11-8, Louisiana. Eleven eight for the home team. Mason Zambo will now come to the plate. Still one out and a runner at second.
19 runs scored in this game after yesterday. The two combined for three. First pitch from Mabius by Zambo, or Zambo fouls it back to the screen. Zambo, a walk, a single, struck out and grounded out. Mabius looks back at second base and delivers the 0-1. Another pitch, foul back to the screen. Zambo falls behind 0-2. One out, runner at second base. The 0-2 pitch to Zambo. He went too far, tried to hold up. He'll be rung up, and that's out number two. Good pitch there from Boston Mabius. Caleb Stelly, the designated hitter, batting sixth in the order for Louisiana, will now come to the plate. Two outs, runner at second. The pitch from Mabius. Misses inside. Jones, Malwai, and Tate Gamble, the five, six, and seven hitters, due up for BYU in the top of the ninth. Right now, their deficit is three runs. Louisiana looking to bring in another. They have a runner at second and two outs. 1-0 pitch, high, 2-0 the count. Sofia Malwai has had quite a day. Three RBIs and two home runs. A solo shot and a two-run blast. 2-0 pitch to Stelly. Now three balls and no strikes. Will Veyon on deck for the Cajuns. BYU trying to avoid the four-game sweep and a five-game losing streak. Mabius with the 3-0 pitch. Taking all the way was Stelly, and he looks to strike one. 11 runs on 10 hits. No errors for Louisiana. Eight runs, eight hits, two errors for BYU. Mabius with the 3-1. Fouled off and out of play to the right side. It's a full count. BYU trying to keep this at a three-run deficit and see what they can do in the top of the ninth inning. Three balls, two strikes. Runner at second. Stelly versus Mabius. Boston delivers. Strike three looking. Good pitch to Stelly. That's back-to-back -back strikeouts looking for Boston Mabius, and they will strand a runner at second, but... The Cajuns extend their lead to three. It's 11-8. Last chance for the Cougars in the top of the ninth when we come back on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's Jason Shepard. Last chance for the BYU Cougars. Top of the ninth inning from Lafayette. They trail 11-8. And Easton Jones takes ball one from J.T. Etheridge in to pitch the top of the ninth inning. 1-0 pitch, strike one to Easton Jones. Jones, Safea Mauai, and Tate Gamble do up here in the top of the ninth. The Cougars need three to tie, four to go ahead. 1-1 one, one pitch, way inside, 2-1. and one. If you're Easton Jones, get on base however you can. <laughs> Safea Mauai has been a one-man wrecking crew today. Jones pops it up into foul territory in front of the BYU dugout. It will get out of play. Malwai on deck with two home runs today and three RBI. A two-run shot and then a solo shot. So you want to get somebody on ahead of him. And see if he can make it a, an extremely special day. It's already been special. Getting his first home runs as a BYU Cougar. 
2-2 pitch to Jones. Inside, full count, good take by Easton. Three balls, two strikes. Etheridge with the pitch, and Easton Jones lifts that ball high in the air to right field. Hood has a beat on it, makes the catch, and Jones is retired for out number one. Cougars down to their final two outs. Safaya Malwai walks to the plate. Two-run home run in the third, and then a solo home run in the seventh. Etheridge, his pitch, misses off the plate, ball one. pitch and that pitch is above everybody and all the way back to the backstop Brock couldn't even get his glove up to catch it that just got away from Etheridge 2-0 Cougars need base runners right now they'll certainly take a solo home run here but you're down three two outs to work with 2-0 pitch and that misses it's 3-0 Tate Gamble due up next for BYU The 3-0 pitch to Safea, taking all the way and takes strike one. Etheridge with the 3-1 pitch. Off the plate, ball four, and it's a one-out walk to Safea Malwai. He did his job, got on base, and that'll bring in the right fielder, Tate Gamble. Cougars trying to climb back in this down three runs here in the top of the ninth. There are there is one out. Tate with two walks here in the ball game. Etheridge first pitch gets the call strike one. Cooper Vest due up next. He would represent the tying run if he gets to the batter's box. A one pitch. Bounces right on the home plate and into the glove of Julian Brock. One and one the count to Tate Gamble. Mal Wyatt first. The one one pitch to Gamble. Another pitch in the dirt. Two and one and a good block by Brock. Rhyming not intended. Mal Wyatt stays put at first. They're not going to take any chances. Down three runs. 2-1 pitch. Gamble lifts the ball into right center. That ball carries. And it is a two-run home run for Tate Gamble. The Cougars have cut into the lead. It was three moments ago. It's now a single run. 11-10 Louisiana. Here come the Cougars. Tate Gamble, his first BYU home run, and it could not have come at a better time. BYU within one. That is another home run brought to you by Zions Bank. And that may be it for JT Etheridge. One out, bases empty, but now the Cougars within a run, and that's going to do it. We will have a new pitcher coming into the ball game for the Ragin' Cajuns. BYU making a comeback. Come back to the new skin. BYU Sports Network after this. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. BYU within a run here on the top of the ninth. Moments ago, a two-run home run from Tate Gamble to right center. Pulled the Cougars within 11 to 10. Number 32, Carson Fluno, who pitched last night against BYU, back into the game here, trying to close this one out for the Cajuns. BYU 10 runs on 9 hits, 2 errors. 11 runs, 10 hits, no errors for Louisiana. Bases are empty. There's only one out. 
The Cougars need one to tie and two to go back on top. Coming to the plate is Cooper Vest. We have had three home runs in the ball game for BYU. Two from Safaya Mauai, and then moments ago, a home run from Tate Gamble, his first as a BYU Cougar. So Fluno has completed his warm-up throws, and now Cooper Vest steps to the plate. The first pitch to Coop. Strike one to Vest. Coop's dad here in attendance watching his son. He's been here for the series. The 0-1 pitch to Vest. And Coop fights it off and goes the other way into foul territory. It's now 0-2. BYU came into this top of the ninth, needing three runs to tie. They've gotten two, but you got to get one more. The 0-2 to Vest. Inside, ball one. And I think that uh, that may have bounced up and hit Brock in the mask. And the home plate umpire, Ryan Broussard, is going to give Julian Brock an opportunity to collect himself. That pitch was way inside, and Brock moved over to his right to block it. And I think it bounced up and hit him right in the mask. He seems to be okay, and play set to resume. One ball, two strikes to Cooper Vest. Fluno on the mound. Base is empty, one out. The one-two pitch to Vest. Strike three looking. And now BYU down to their final out. That will bring in Bryant Ball. He will need to reach base to keep this game going. Two outs. Two runs have already scored. BYU's deficit is one run. The first pitch to Ball misses high for ball one. If Ball can get on base, Ozzie Pratt would bat next. Fluno with the 1-0 pitch. Low for ball two. Two outs, top of the ninth. Cougars trail by a run. Fluno with the 2-0 pitch. And he gets the call on the inside part of the plate, 2-1. 11-10 is our score. 21 runs have been scored in this ball game. BYU needs to make it 22. 2-1 pitch, and that is way outside for ball three. Three-one count to the Cougar catcher Bryant Ball. Fluno delivers the three-one, and Bryant Ball with a liner hit sharply to Marshock, and he makes the play to end the ball game. You could not have hit that any harder if you're Bryant Ball. Just a better defensive play by Max. Marshock, and that is your final from Lafayette, Louisiana. The Ragin' Cajuns sweep the Cougars in the four games. They win game four in the finale, 11 to 10. With the loss, BYU falls to two and six. They are on a five-game losing streak. With the win, Louisiana improves to six and one. We will take a break. We will come back. We'll get you final stats. We'll also hear from the head coach of the Cougars, Trent Pratt. That's all when we return to Russo Park here in Lafayette, Louisiana, on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. <laughs> 